Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in, Winning Cures Everything. It is the Monday, May 3rd edition of the show. I am your host, Gary, and of course, riding solo this evening slash morning. Hope all of you are having a wonderful day thus far. Hopefully you are starting your morning with us. This is the Sunday night recording slash Monday morning podcast. If you enjoy it, tell a friend. If you don't, it didn't happen. We'll just say it like that. Got a lot to discuss. Obviously, it was NFL draft weekend. I am currently sitting here watching South Dakota State and Southern Illinois in the FCS playoffs. A uh, lot to uh, to get into with that, obviously, on this week's college football show over at SBR Picks. So why don't we just go ahead and discuss that. Uh, first things first, winningcureseverything.com. That is our website. Everything that you need to know about us will be right over there. All the different shows that we appear on, uh, along with all the shows that we do right here. So make sure that you go and check it out and that you follow slash subscribe slash review etc. Everything that you need to over there, especially the podcast, that would certainly help. A five-star review over at Apple Podcasts. Make sure you also listen on Spotify, etc. That is quickly becoming our second biggest uh, listening audience is on Spotify. It's kind of crazy, but we're on Amazon Music. We're on TuneIn. We're on whatever. So go and check it out. Anywhere that you want to hear us, we are there. The College Football Show. Every single week comes out on Wednesdays. You can find it at sbrpicks.com slash ncaaf. And you can also find that on YouTube. Search out SBR Picks on YouTube, and you can find it right there. Once we get into the season, obviously, many more shows than just the Wednesday show. Going to make this one a quick one this evening. Uh, let me get out my pencil so that I can write our times down. And that way, if you are watching on YouTube, you can just kind of click to whatever topic you want to jump in on. But I will make it swift this evening. Because obviously, Chris and I are going to have a lot to talk about on the Monday Live show. So, let's start off with this. The NFL Draft TV ratings. So day one is is what they've really got out right now. But it was the second highest viewing ever for the NFL Draft. And I think it's incredible. Now, these are only stats that include um, NFL Network, ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and uh, ESPN2, I think, whatever it is. Oh, ABC. ABC, that's it. NFL Network, ABC, ESPN, ESPN Deportes. Um, yeah, 12.6 million viewers for opening night. Now, not quite what last year's was, which was a uh, 15.5 million. At, pretty crazy, pretty crazy. This thing continues to grow every single year. It was fun to see crowds back, but that 12.6 million viewers, that means that it did better than the Oscars did on Sunday night of last week, and that's unheard of. That never happens. The Oscars are supposed to be pop culture, something for everybody. Everybody is is more zeroed in on movies and entertainment and whatnot as opposed to one specific sport where they are drafting college players to play in that league. And yet, there was enough drama, there was enough entertainment factor going on that people tuned in to watch the NFL draft. And I think it is a sign of big, big things to come. If you can get that kind of viewership for a draft, think about all of the other numbers that you can do elsewhere, right? Which is why the NFL is still the top dog when it comes to big-time sports. It's why they continue to get these massive TV deals because they are the most worthwhile company to put your money into. Uh, Especially if you're a television advertiser, if you are a television network, etc., people are going to continue to tune in. That's just the way it goes. The storylines create themselves. There's always something worth talking about with this sport. The NFL continues on. They are the kings for a reason. So, with that said, I'm going to talk about some of my winners and losers. Not going to spend a long time on it because Chris and I are going to break down every single team, every single division. We're going to discuss this in depth, but I'll go ahead and give you my initial impressions coming out of the weekend. And, you know, I'm going to tell you, We'll start with the winners. We like the good news first, right? I think the Bears were winners this weekend. I think Ryan Pace did okay. Uh, The Justin Fields thing obviously is a massive, massive part of that. But I do think that the Bears, with the Justin Fields 
uh, thing, that trade, whatever. It doesn't matter what they gave up. Ryan Pace understood, like, I've got to get this thing done. Otherwise, it's not going to matter whether I've got picks next year or not. I need to move up, and I need to get a quarterback. Andy Dalton is not going to cut it. So he went up and got Justin Fields at number 11, Tevin Jenkins in the second round. Um, after that, you know, they had three sixth-round picks. Uh, Khalil Herbert, Virginia Tech, that's not bad. Daz Newsom, North Carolina wide receiver, pretty good. Thomas Graham Jr., cornerback out of Oregon. All of those, I'm a fan of. I think that there's value there. So, you know, you you kind of shore, uh, shore up the offensive tackle position a little bit with uh, Larry Borum from Missouri. Like, I, I'm okay with this. I think the Bears did okay. The Eagles, the Eagles needed playmakers. They have not had playmakers in forever, and I think they absolutely killed in this spot. Um, the Eagles, you know, Devontae Smith was the first, the first draft, the first player, whatever. Um, I'm, you know, he's immediately their number one wide receiver. They wanted to fix up their offensive line a little bit. They bring in Landon Dickerson. Perfect. You know, they, I think he fits their style, their culture. Um, you know, after that, Kenneth Gainwell in the fifth round, running back out of Memphis, he is uh, a lightning bolt. He's, I mean, just a stick of dynamite. He's he's unbelievable. So he opted out for this past season, so you didn't get to see what he could do again. But in 2019, he was the reason that Memphis went 13-1 and and went to the Cotton Bowl. I mean, he's unreal. So I uh, I like that pick. Uh, Taron Jackson, Coastal Carolina, edge defender. I, I'm in on that. Patrick Johnson from Tulane. Another one, they got him in the seventh round, unbelievably. Jacoby Stevens, sixth round, out of LSU, safety. Like, they they got some really, really good value here. I uh, I was a fan of the Eagles draft. The Browns had a ton of really good value picks. Greg Newsom in the first, uh, cornerback out of Northwestern. They had Jeremiah Owusu-Koromoa out of Notre Dame in the second round. Somehow he fell all the way to the 52nd pick, even though he was... Uh, rated by most people as a, a top 20 pick. At the biggest part is he was very similar to uh, who was the guy out of Michigan a few years ago. Um, I show sure can't remember. But it, it, it comparable, I guess, to maybe like Isaiah Simmons last year. Now, Simmons had way more talent, I think. Uh, Isaiah Simmons was out of Clemson, ended up going to the Cardinals, but he was a tweener, right? He's safety linebacker somewhere in the middle there, maybe a little bit undersized, maybe, you know, who knows, right? And it's kind of the same thing with this kid, only you know he's a dog and you know he can play. So you just got to put him out there, see where he fits best, and, and let him sick him. And I'm totally fine with that. Anthony Schwartz, wide receiver out of Auburn, absolute stud. I mean, you want to talk about speed. He's got all the speed in the world, and he played in a system at Auburn where the quarterback couldn't get him the ball. And I think the Browns are going to be able to give him the ball. So... I think that was a good pick. They got uh, offensive tackle James Hudson out of Cincinnati. Uh, Tony Fields out of West Virginia. Linebacker slash safety position going to be, I think, really good. They got Richard LeCount, the safety out of Georgia, in the, in the fifth round. I, I, don't, I don't get how this stuff is done, but I feel like he should have gone higher. Uh, they got really good value for their pick. So I'm, I'm all in on the Browns draft as well. The Washington football team, I am a fan of that one as well. Uh, let me tell you what all they ended up doing. Uh, Jamin Davis, linebacker out of Kentucky. I think that's a good pick at number 19. Samuel Cosme, uh, offensive tackle from Texas. Uh, Deami Brown, wide receiver in round three. They got uh, John Bates, the tight end out of Boise in round four. They got safety Derek Forrest from Cincinnati in round four. They got William Bradley King out of Baylor. He was a transfer from Arkansas State that ended up going over to, uh, to Baylor. Uh, he's an edge rusher. I think he's going to be good. Shaka Tony out of Penn State. They got him in the seventh round. At like I, I think the Washington football team had really good value picks with players that fit Ron Rivera's culture, and that's exactly what you need. You need players that are going to fit with the coaching staff, and I think that it is perfectly done here. So cheers to the football team for knocking out another killer draft. And then finally, the Chargers. I think the Chargers did really, really well. Uh, tackle Rashawn Slater from Northwestern. I thought he was a terrific pick in this spot. He is going to absolutely be a leader on that offensive line for Justin Herbert for years and years to come. I, I mean, he's just unbelievable. They uh, they got Asante Samuel Jr. in the second round. Wide receiver Josh Palmer out of Tennessee. I, I could see that one working really well, especially with uh, uh, Justin Herbert. 
tight end Trey McKitty out of Georgia. Uh, I might would have gone with a different tight end at that spot, but neither here nor there. Uh, edge rusher uh, Chris Rumpf out of Duke. They got him in the fourth round. Uh, and then after that, it's just, uh, you know, a bunch of dudes. They got running back Larry Roundtree out of Missouri. You know, it, that's a you take a flyer on a running back, see if it works. Um, but Roundtree was really, really good at Missouri. He was very effective. Cornerback Mark Webb out of Georgia uh, did not produce a lot on the field, but you know everything's there, so you can take a seventh-round flyer on him and just see what happens. I, I think the Chargers did really, really well. So that, that those are my five top winners thus far. And as far as my losers go, I'm going to start off with the Packers. Obviously, the Aaron Rodgers news over the weekend, not what you want to start out with. And then, of course, your first-round pick. Why don't you go ahead and reach for a cornerback named Eric Stokes out of Georgia, who is good, super fast, but there's a lot that you need to work on here. And this is 9 out of 10 drafts that they have drafted defense in the first round. And still no help for Aaron Rodgers. And while there was all the talk of trades and whatnot going on, even still, if you do move ahead with Jordan Love, you got to give him some weapons to work with. You got to give him something here. And, you know, again, they didn't. Uh, round two, they took center Josh Myers out of Ohio State. Finally, in round three, they took a wide receiver, Amari Rogers, who, uh, you know, okay, he's he's explosive, I guess. Um, I. He, nobody ever really talked well about his route running. Um, you know, I, we'll, we'll see what happens, but I don't know. That that wasn't what I would have gone with. Uh, they took tackle Royce Newman out of Ole Miss. Um, you know, cornerback uh, Shamar John Charles uh, out of App State. Okay, that's cool. Linebacker Isaiah McDuffie out of Boston College in the sixth round. I feel like he probably should have gone a little higher. Uh, and then running back Kylan Hill with pick number 256. It's another flyer on a running back. You just re-signed Aaron Jones. Okay. Like, I, I, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But I, I was not a fan of this draft. Uh, we'll roll with the Saints next. They are my second loser here. Uh, you take edge rusher Peyton Turner out of Houston uh, late in the first round. Doesn't make any sense to me at all, but this is another one of those where he won kind of the underwear Olympics a bit. He has all the... Uh, all the size, he's 6'6", 270 pounds, 35-inch arms, very versatile, impressive, you know, physically, I guess. Um, didn't see a ton out of him at Houston, but, you know, he's he's got the size, so okay, I guess. Round two, they took Pete Warner. I didn't think he was great at Ohio State. Like, I, definitely not, you know, second round, but I... Okay, I mean, he's a, a solid linebacker, but I just think he's really old school, and I don't know how that works against today's offenses. So, I don't know how that necessarily helps. Uh, cornerback Paulson Adebo out of Stanford in third round, I think that was a really good pick. Ian Book could prove to be really, really good, but I don't know that you had to take him in the fourth round. Uh, but good for Ian Book for being a fourth-round pick when a lot of people had him slotted in the uh, sixth or seventh. Uh, offensive tackle Landon Young, I do like that pick. And then wide receiver Kawan Baker out of South Alabama in the seventh round. I think that's a good flyer. He played really, really well on a really bad team. Um, so we'll see. But I, I, overall, not a fan of the Saints draft. Um, I got three more. Colts draft, not great. Not a, not a fan of what the Colts did. Quiddy Pay, you know, okay, it needs some refining, I guess. Deo Odeyingbo uh, from Vanderbilt in the second round. Another edge rusher. They took an edge rusher with their first and second round picks. Tight end in the fourth round. Um, then you take Sean Davis out of Florida. Sam Ellinger, who I didn't even think would get drafted because I don't think he can. He's he's very Tebow-esque. I don't think he's great at throwing the football. Uh, he might be a good leader, but I don't, I don't know what you're going to do with him. Uh, Will Freeze from Penn State in the seventh round. Uh, you know, just not, not a lot there for the Colts. I was not a fan of that. The Rams... Uh, I didn't really understand what they were doing. Linebacker Ernest Jones in the third round. Uh, Tutu Atwell from Louisville, who weighed in at like 149 pounds. And I understand that the NFL game is changing. I get that. But still, like, you, I'm terrified of that, right? 149 pounds. Uh, he is one of the lightest receivers to ever play in this league. And, I mean, you got some some crushers over in the NFC West. So, I mean, we'll see with that. Uh, they took Bobby Brown the third out of Texas A&M. They took uh, Robert Rochelle out of Central Arkansas, and that one that one makes sense. That's a really really good player if you have not watched him. 
Wide receiver Jacob Harris uh, out of UCF. Edge rusher Ernest Brown the fourth out of Northwestern. And running back Jake Funk they took in the seventh round. I, you know, okay, I guess. Like some of these, some of these could have really high ceilings. Uh, they could also have really low floors. Uh, there is a chance that none of these guys are on the roster in three years. Uh, you you don't like to say that about a draft, but there's a very, you know, and to me, it's a very strong chance of that. So, you know, I didn't like what they did. And then finally, the Seahawks uh, only had three picks. They took in round two, Dwayne Eskridge, wide receiver out of Western Michigan, who was really good, but played in a really different type of offense than what the Seahawks do. Cornerback Trey Brown out of Oklahoma. He's undersized, but he is a bulldog. Um, but if you're undersized, I, I don't know what they're going to do with you. Like, they're probably going to force him into the slot a lot. Uh, and then Stone Forsyth out of uh, Florida, offensive tackle they got in the sixth round. You know, okay, work in progress, I guess. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not, not a fan of this draft. I will say that. Not a fan of what the Seahawks did. They only got three picks. Didn't do a lot of maneuvering to try and, you know, work anything else back out. But, hey, cheers to them. Cheers to them. All right, and then uh, finally, finally, we will close out with this topic, and that is Aaron Rodgers. Now, this ate up the news cycle on Thursday and then continued in over the weekend. I mean, it was just a nonstop barrage of A-Rod news. Aaron Rodgers wants the GM gone. That's Brian Gutekunst, uh, I believe is <laughs> I believe is the name. I know that that's not exactly how you pronounce it, but I'm sure that it is relatively close. And then, of course, there's all the talk about Aaron Rodgers is going to Denver, and Aaron Rodgers is going to uh, the Raiders. Now, the Raiders thing is intriguing. You know, we've talked about all the weapons that the Broncos have. If you look at the depth chart, if you're looking at what the Raiders have going for them right now as far as skill position talent, right? Obviously, they took Alex Leatherwood, so they're trying to uh, shore up the right side of their offensive line right now. Maybe that'll work. Maybe it won't. Who knows? Um, but as far as the skill position players, Henry Ruggs the third. Willie Sneed, Brian Edwards, John Brown, Hunter Renfro, Zay Jones, uh, Josh Jacobs, and Kenyon Drake at running back. Not bad. And then Derek Carr is your quarterback. You know, you got Marcus Mariota as your, your second team, whatever. Um, I will say this. I think he could win there. I think he could absolutely win with John Gruden. Now, I'm not the biggest Gruden fan, but I do think that that team is built to where they could put up points in a hurry Um I don't know that Derek Carr has been bad. As a matter of fact, the the Raiders brass, uh, here's here's what, let's see, Jeremy Fowler said. Uh, he said they're happy with Derek Carr. Nothing's going on right now, and they could very well extend Derek Carr sometime soon. But the Raiders look into every single quarterback situation. They looked at pass free agents or trade options, so John Gruden is sort of always lurking. You can't discount him. Uh, he said the Raiders are comfortable with Carr under center, at, at the same time, though, Aaron Rodgers is an upgrade for almost every team. You know, sans Kansas City and Tampa Bay. You know, really. He was the MVP of the league last year. I look at this as it, the Raiders have been kind of trying to get out of Derek Carr ever since Gruden got to town. I mean, they have always been in the talks for whoever the big-name guy is. They were in the talks for certain quarterbacks in the draft. I mean, it's it, it's happened year after year after year, and I don't expect that to stop. I I think the Raiders would really be able to do well with Aaron Rodgers. Neither here nor there. Green Bay says that they're not trading Aaron Rodgers. Rodgers says that he is not coming back to play at Green Bay until they get rid of the GM. He said he doesn't like any of the guys in the front office. And I got to tell you, I, I really believe that he might not um, – he might not come back and play for them. I, I believe, I looked up the Aaron Rodgers career earnings, and let's see exactly what we've got here. Um, Aaron Rodgers has earned, da, 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 da. and of course it doesn't have, there we go, career earnings. His career earnings thus far are sitting at over 70, no, sorry, over $92 million. Um. Just on signing bonuses, seventy million for, let's see, roster bonus, salary, signing bonus, workout bonus, blah 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 blah. He has made over two hundred forty million dollars in the NFL. I don't think that he has to play anymore if he doesn't want to. He's played for sixteen seasons. Would it surprise me to see him right off into the sunset? 
A guy like Aaron Rodgers, absolutely not. You know, if he wants to do Jeopardy, cool. But he's also said that he can do Jeopardy and still play in the NFL. Would he want to retire for uh, for a season, I guess? I guess that's uh, as long as it would take, or, or two seasons, or whatever it is, to get out of that contract? Possibly. And then come back, you know, stronger than ever, or whatever. I mean, he's, you know, he's 36, going to be 37, I believe. Uh, or maybe it's the other way around. Maybe it's 37, going to be 38. Either way, he's he's getting on up there. But he just had an MVP season. He's at the top of his game right now, and he is playing for an organization that refuses to give him any kind of help. Like, they are making such awful moves in the draft year after year after year. The only offensive player that they have taken in the first round in the last 10 years was his replacement. They took a rookie quarterback. They had to trade back into the first round to get that guy. And yet they won't draft him a a wide receiver. They won't draft him offensive line help. And yet, he has continued to win despite all of this. I would love to see him play almost anywhere else in the league just to see what happens. Now, obviously, some people want to just watch the world burn. We understand that. But I, I would like to see this because I think there is a, a large part of Aaron Rodgers' game that plays when he is really pissed off. Like, that plays well when he's really pissed off. And I think he's really pissed off right now. I think last year's MVP season was a direct correlation with the fact that they drafted Jordan Love. Maybe that's just me. I don't know. But if you think the same thing as me, let me know. I would love to hear your opinion on it. So there was a lot of things to get into in the NFL draft. Uh, From the college side, especially Michigan State, this is the first time in 80 years they haven't had a player drafted. Um, Of course, Alabama numbers, bananas. I mean, just through the roof. Six first-round draft picks. 10 draft picks overall, Uh, and yet one of the five stars that everybody expected that likely would have been a a top 10, top 15 pick just a couple of years ago, uh, or last year, whatever it was, Dylan Moses, he actually did not get drafted at all, but his medicals came back. Uh, Not great. So he is actually an under, uh, or sorry, unsigned free agent with the Jacksonville Jaguars, and he will start the season on the NFI list. So, you know, interesting stuff there. A lot of stuff that we will end up discussing, I believe, on the college football show from the college side of the NFL draft. But overall, I gave you my winners and losers. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, that whole situation, these are all things that we are going to discuss more on the Monday afternoon live show uh, with myself and Chris. And at some point, I believe, we are going to do our draft grades, and we're going to do that with, our buddy Kyle from the SBR NFL show, uh, DFS Bachelor. So make sure that you tune in for all of this. Of course, we have many more things to talk about this week. We are going to be breaking down every single team's draft, going through actually researching, figuring figuring it out from not just a quick hitter, and eh, I don't really like this, and, eh, you know, we'll, we'll try and figure out the pieces and give it a very unbiased uh, review of what happened. So, Hopefully you will stick around with us and you will hang out with us all week long over the next however long. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. It's been a long day. It was my son's third birthday this weekend, so lots uh, lots going on with that. And I am exhausted. It is Sunday night late. I'm going to get this thing posted, and then I am going to bed because I have to be up for work in the morning. So I'm sure much like many of you, you will all be working on Monday morning. <laughs> Hopefully you are spending your Monday with us. So with that said, we'll get out of here. Go and check out winningcureseverything.com. Go check out sbrpicks.com slash NCAAF. Make sure you are subscribed and that you follow and that you like the video. Share it out. Jump into the comments. I want to hear your opinion on what I have said thus far. And we're going to do this thing. You guys take care of yourself. Take care of each other. And hopefully all of your tickets cashed this past weekend and will cash this week. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.